Hi, uh, I'm going to demonstrate a weird way of uh, detecting what surface the player is going to hit when it's walking or jumping or yeah, uh, which can be very useful for playing uh, appropriate footstep sounds or impact sound effects when you move about the terrain. Um, I initially just used a uh, raycast, this one. Um, to determine what the object is uh, underneath the player when it's uh, when I want to play the footstep sound, but uh, uh, I have a problem uh, with uh, the terrain being one large object, so it couldn't be. So it only had uh, one physics material, uh, and I wanted to have different sound effects for grass or on stone, both for immersion and uh, gameplay reasons. So I, it, uh, it, it, I initially I thought it was stupid, but I went with the camera, looking at the ground. Um, it <laughs> might seem a little stupid, but I'm going to show you why uh, in a second. So, uh, here's my game. Uh, in the bottom left you can see... Um, a texture that is 3 by 3 pixels large. This is what the camera on my feet renders to. And uh, which I'm getting the color from to determine what material the player will hit next. Right now it shows red. Because I'm standing on grass and uh, I'm standing still. Uh, but the camera rotates in the direction you're heading or the, velocity or the velocity of the player. So when I move on to gravel you can see it turns blue and place the correct sound effect. And then I move on to grass and on to gravel again. Uh, how I made this work is by... Um, uh, the, well, the reason I needed uh, this approach is because my terrain is made in uh, Blender and uh, I wanted to use complex geometry like overhangs and uh, caves. Like, uh, can see in here uh, and uh, with a height map you can't add that uh, like uh, with the games like uh, Skyrim and Valheim they have to use uh, static object to uh, make this effect so they would uh, just have the mountainside and they would have the rock sticking out just to make something the player can walk under uh, but I yeah I want to avoid that, I want to just make freely what, <laughs> what any shapes I wanted in uh, Blender. So uh, I, uh, so in order to paint the terrain with the uh, correct uh, materials, uh, I use uh, the vertex colors, which I paint in uh, Blender. So here you see red is uh, more like the grassy foresty thing, uh, blue is uh, gravel, dirt, and green is the stone. Uh, and you can see in uh, in this cave here, it's uh, got gravel on the floor and stone on the walls. Uh, and you can do that with uh, just a height map. Uh, so yeah, uh, this uh, I have this uh, copy of the landscape mesh with this material on it. That is only visible on the visual layer 6. And uh, on the player, this is what... Uh, this is the only layer that the camera can see. Uh, I made a test scene so you can see the effect more clearly. So you can see the same thing in the bottom left. And as I walk on the blue, it turns blue. Oh. And over to green. And over to red. The same you see when you're jumping, it uh, thinks I'm going to land a little in the front, but it corrects it when I'm on the way down. So it gets the correct surface when I can also see when walking sideways. The camera knows what materials comes next. And yeah, uh, it works well enough. I haven't noticed anything performance-wise. And it's not stupid if it works. I'm thinking this uh, can also be used on uh, enemies to detect the player by having separate models on a separate visual instance 
and uh, even use shaders to have foliage disguise the player, stuff like that. So yeah, just uh, tell me if it's stupid or not. If you have any questions, you know what to do. I'm just going to wander aimlessly uh, around for a bit. See you guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs>